Okay, so if you're keeping track, you know we did orange calcite in this little series and we got these nails, which I think are okay. Then we did green fluorite. It's actually going for jade, but you know, end up looking so good. I love these so much. So this time, a lot of requests. We're doing white opal with a little bit of gold accents. <laughs> channel so in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved these white opal inspired nails um we got some gold accents some crystals and we'll get into all of these details i want to preface this by saying i'm about 85 percent sure i'm going to do another video on these because i already know how i would love to perfect them and make them look even closer to white opal I practiced these about an hour and a half, two hours before my client came. I planned on doing them. She asked me. I wasn't expecting it. This what, this is what we got. I'm super happy with them, but I feel like I know I can do them better. So this was this client's previous set. They lasted really good. No lifting. She's missing a couple stones, but she herself um, stated she's very rough on her hands she doesn't wear gloves and she cleans constantly with chemicals bleach you know shame on her but she knows it she's a former nail tech and she knows she knows what she did wrong okay <laughs> so we actually um adhered her stones a little bit different in this video the remaining stones are very difficult to get off like i said she she knew she put those nails through if she wasn't doing all that I feel so very confident. I'm kind of surprised she lost the two little stones that she did. But, um, you know, that's why you got to use your name. They're not tools. They're tools. But, you know, she knew what to expect. She, you know, if you're going to abuse your nails, you can expect them to wear differently. But she put them through great abuse. <laughs> and um, she actually felt really kind of bad about it but it's all good so i'm starting with this um i think it's called the monster bit from atwood industries and i'm taking down all the product um and i'm taking everything basically all the way down i'm getting super close to the natural nail but not actually getting like this is a very aggressive bit it may look like i'm getting to the natural nail but you'll see later in the video that i'm absolutely not i just want to debulk very quickly because I built the nail out of the nude color. And, I mean, even if I didn't, this design needs to be encapsulated. It's multiple layers. I was kind of playing it close with how I did it. Like I said, I really want to redo this. Because um, I think I can execute it much better. But I'm honestly not mad at these. I think they look super cute. But in retrospect, I, I'll tell you this. Um, well, let me tell you what's actually going on in the video. I used that monster bit. I got closer to the natural nail, and I'm using a crosscut bit, which is a diamond grit bit. And I am taking the product down further, but I didn't want to use that aggressive bit super close to the natural nail. And you'll see when I go and dehydrate later, um, only the natural nail will be dehydrated in that ashy look. And you'll see most of the, from the regrowth um, down, it remains kind of, not shiny, but it doesn't have that ashiness, which indicates there's a thin layer of product. So don't fret, don't worry. We have a good base layer of gel, it's just hard to see. So I'm using this to get into the fine area, like the sidewalls and stuff to get the previous color out. And like I said, debulk a little bit safer towards the natural nail. Kind of kick away some cuticle from the nail plate. And after this, I'm going to go in with my mini skiver bit and remove the cuticle from the nail plate more efficiently. And then after that, the round bit to remove um, any dead skin, um, actual skin from um, the eponychium around the nails. Any like 
beginnings of hangnails and callous dry areas and stuff. So that's after this with the round bit. Um, so back to what I was saying. <laughs> I um, had actually had plans on doing opal nails and purchased some items, which you'll see later in the video. Um, about a month prior and they took a minute to get to me. Well, they got to me. I had some stuff going on. It took a minute for me to actually like pop it open and I'm still actually waiting on some as I record this. And these nails, um, spoiler, are actually made with real opal. Like actual opal is in these nails. Um, and I, um, well, okay, it's like lab grown opal. So it's real. It's like lab grown diamonds. They're actually diamonds they're not ones dug from the earth but chemically diamonds so it's synthetic like lab made opal but nonetheless it's real opal there are glitters and mylars in here you'll see later in the video so i just want to tell you that it's pretty exciting there's actual literal opal helping with this effect um so yeah i was only able to practice shortly before the client came and you know what i'm gonna start to, i'm gonna stop talking bad about myself i did a good job i'll do better <laughs> so you see me flaking off this um the dry skin and just getting in those sidewalls getting those calloused areas those dry areas and just flaking that off and just you know so we get a nice look um, it helps keep her from getting any hangnails from that dead skin that's kind of hanging to get caught and kind of rip up and whatever. So that's why it's important, um, at least to me, for us to do a step like this to buff that dry, dead skin away. And you can see I'm probably doing that at about 8,000 RPMs. I believe, yeah, 8,000 RPMs for this bit, just in case you want to know. And I'm going in both directions forward and backwards so i can buff the skin from right to left and left to right that kind of helps you get different angles um just by going the different directions so even if you're left-handed you would usually go in reverse i would use the bit in reverse as you normally would and then also the opposite way for a lefty would be forward and just hit the skin the nails in different directions you can also use that technique with a skiver bit to get um hard to reach like cuticle from the nail plate if somebody has like deep sidewalls so that's a little tip so i'm using clear rubber base from gel bottle ink and i am using this french white from gel bottle ink and these wave gel ether flakes number three these flakes from daily charm these are the mermaid flakes in ariel or ariel however you want to say it however it's supposed to be said i don't know <laughs> and um mermaid flakes and aquata and both from daily charm you can use go tabitha in the number 10 and then these aurora flakes from glitter planet uk got these a few years ago actually and these two colors from the gel bottle ink as well supernova and oceania 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 i promise i can read y'all this is Milk Bath from Daily Charm. Amber Fire from Wildflowers. It's a beautiful, like, orange shift glitter. And these are the literal, actual pieces of the shaved, crushed opal. It doesn't look like much. They're actually finer. I'm waiting. I was wait, actually waiting for chunkier ones. Oh, and this gold flake is from Daily Charm as well. Is it? No, that was a lie that I just told you. I don't know where that's from. But you might get it from Daily Charm, maybe eBay. Who shops at eBay? I guess people still do amazon whatever and so i'm applying that um i dehydrated the nail as you can see you see only the part near her cuticle area is dehydrated in the ashy look that's where the natural nail is actually exposed the rest has a thin layer of gel so i told you not to worry and um so what was i saying i'm talking about this <laughs> um the oh the white opal i'm sorry y'all the white opal i was waiting on chunkier pieces and uh they hadn't 
came yet at the time of this video and they still have it now <laughs> and so i'm putting down those um flakes from daily charm first and honestly i could have done this a different way like i said i practiced just a little bit before my client came uh, i didn't know what she wanted but i always i uh, recently as i started taking clients back again i like to ask my clients i want to establish them telling me what they want so i can practice it make sure i have the colors make sure i have the products so we can not lose a lot of time trying to plan out actual design so yeah so i'm using just this stippling type brush and putting on these flakes and just using the different colors because i'm using the wave gel ones i'm using four the wave gel ones the two from daily charms and those aurora flakes from glitter planet uk so then in the midst of this i'm trying two different techniques i'm doing two nails with a coat of the um milk bath color from daily charm which is a sheer white and the rest i'm doing a thin layer of the gel bottle inks french white now retrospect when i was doing another set i was doing some baby boomers on a client I was like, ah, this is more sheer than I remember. And I realized the pigment, the white pigment, separated from the actual, like, gel. And it wasn't stirred when I used it in this video. Which actually kind of worked to my advantage. Because you see how really super sheer of white it is. And I was like, man, this is way more not a thing than I thought. I always knew it was like a sheer, more jelly, not jelly, but milky white. And, um... That's why I've liked it um, for that. That's why I've used it in the past. And yeah, so if you happen to have this product and it looks like that, you probably need to stir it. Yeah, so my thought was <laughs> I wanted to kind of have a layer because that's a hard gel. The other is a soft gel. And so I just tried it two different ways to see how I appreciated it. So then I dab dabbed some of that Amber Fire glitter on the nail which has that that orange color if you can see it come through it has that literally fiery amber color <laughs> um but yeah it's that orange color which i think is really to me it's kind of hard to get that bright bright orange in the opal that kind of always stands out to me i know that's like all the colors but for some reason the orange that you get in opal and like the pinky color really stands out so then I did that, and I'm curing in between this. So on this hand, I did it, I adapted it, and, but then I burnished it in. You see me kind of wipe it. You see how it gives like this chrome look? You see it in like a more pigmented, solid look with the orange effect. So I went back at some point and did that with the other hand, that same technique. And see, you can see it coming through this sheer white. And I'm leaving everything as thin as possible. And trying to add as many layers as I can. Um, thin layers of everything. And so I added that Supernova color from Gel Bottle Ink. Which is kind of hard to describe. But I thought it was kind of necessary. Added a little more depth. And then I'm adding these Mylar Flakes. These I got before I even went to nail school many years ago. And have been having them. And they've gone a long way. And I can't remember where I got them from, but I know many and plenty companies make them. So this is me going back in with that other hand with that amber fire glitter and trying to kind of burnish it. Then I'm going in with this Oceania color. Y'all, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm going to feel so stupid. <laughs> and it is this beautiful blue reflex. I know you can see it. It is really something is really eye-catching and striking and a lot of times the blue reflex will pull very yellow certain points but that really doesn't so then i'll leave that and i left that wet and now i am literally dropping those opal the um crushed opal on the nail it's actual opal <laughs> and like i said it's a little i wanted to mix like super fine and like me like different ones i didn't really use the powder one i had two different ones this is the chunkier of the two but again still super small and i'm just kind of dumping it on there on a wet surface on the wet gel kind of tapping it in i'm moving it out of the way of the mylar flake so that those can still kind of peek through for like chunks of iridescence and 
whatever <laughs> then i'm adding a little more of actual flakes on the nail after i cured it to set those pieces of opal in place just to add like again those chunkier kind of more direct pieces of that um color shift effect that those flakes give got the opal from a seller on etsy and i'll try to link them down below but yeah, it was just a seller on Etsy. So now I'm encapsulating this with that French white, which is, again, a hard gel, a builder gel. And I really did like this at this point. Um, I think it looked really good. And um, like I said, I really wish I had the little chunkier pieces to add more character. But really look how it takes shape once I start encapsulating it with that sheer white and also i'd like to say go back to it when i said this wasn't mixed well and it really kind of worked to my advantage the fact that it was kind of on the even more sheer side of white it really let a lot of that color shift poke through but also you know of course gave us the white effect that we needed and i was adding a little more flakes really i'm adding the um from the mylar flakes the ones that kind of shift blue and very orange because again like i said the orange is what really steals my heart in the opal of course in combination with the other colors but for me that's just what does it <laughs> so i'm just making sure i float this over the nail there's going to be a whole bunch of crevices because again we added an actual pieces of crushed opal on here so it's a little chunky and um we want to make sure and then the mylar flakes are actually a little more stiff so we want to make sure those are fully covered as well so we cure that in the light and um you can see i think it looks super beautiful and then i'm gonna go in and encapsulate this with a clear builder this is a clear builder in a bottle i can't remember I, maybe it's from gel bottle ink but i'm not sure but just to further encapsulate this i didn't want to add any more white because i didn't want to cover up the color anymore i didn't want to make it any more opaque i wanted to let the opal effect that we got to shine through so once i got it where i wanted it i encapsulated it in clear and it's gonna look super crazy <laughs> and wacky <laughs> um but i cured that and i shaped the nails and now i'm going in and debulking and getting them back in order smoothing them out and i personally didn't find any issues with filing these in regards to the um opal the actual opal pieces that are in the nail um i was concerned like they might hit the bit and sound like i'm like trying to file cement or rock which i know i probably had to have hit some just because the way i um took down the cuticle area i got it pretty flush and so i know that i had to have hit them and i feel like they just powdered pretty well this is a technical nail term of stuff powdering off the nail but like it, it didn't seem super coarse and like my file had any issue getting through them and i'm using a um ceramic bit and i think it's from todak usa somebody commented and reminded me where it was probably from on my last video and it's a smooth top bit which means a safety bit you don't have to worry about cutting your client but you also want to be careful it is in a fine grip and i'll probably use this use this at about nineteen thousand rpms i'm trying to do better and remember everything for you guys and so you'll see on this nail some of the mylars poking through just because I filed it a little low. The integrity and structure of my nail comes first. I always try to keep in mind um, the design and try to prepare, do everything as thin as possible. But sometimes it happens. This is not a big deal. This is such a irregular, organic look. If you have a piece of mylar that you know you accidentally file off or you can see more directly than the others, it's not a big deal. If this was like a, you know, fine ombre or something, then we might be in trouble. But with this type of look, you know, you have a lot of wiggle room. But I do want to add, I actually, I didn't show it, but I shaped her nails before I even did all this. 
like before I put the opal effect just to make sure they were a little more narrow and in shape so when I actually went back to gain my shape again after I applied everything I didn't file into my design as much if that makes sense so after I use that bit I'm going in with a cross cut bit just to further um, get the cuticle area flush and remove any inconsistencies and I also use this bit um, instead of hand buffing to make sure my surface has a texture to it so that my top coat or my gel color, my crystals, charms, whatever I'm doing next after this point has a little bit of a rough surface to ensure that it adheres properly. So again, I'm just going around that cuticle area and then I'm just following through the rest of the nail to make sure it's buff and also for any inconsistencies I may find. So I'm mixing together an actual white. I believe this is a white from Wildflowers Inc. A, um, is that what it's called? Wow, you know what I'm saying. Um, it's a gel paint white and I'm using clear and that milky white because my client wanted some veining. Okay, so I'm using Protein Bond just to kind of be able to see the lay of the land without top coating. It kind of shines it up, you see, for a second. So I can kind of see the details of the nail a little more. So let's talk about this. I'm going in and trying to add, like, veining detail, but keep it real sheer and real kind of... So it doesn't stand out, just a subtle little thing. My client requested this. I personally, before she, like, I don't, I don't want to hear it a third time, but I only practiced a little bit before she came and I decided she, I hadn't spoke with her about the actual details, like the veining, but I was like, oh, a veining situation is not going to work. And lo and behold, she had asked me, she's like, oh, I have faith in you. I believe you can do it. And I, I have had regrets. I was sitting here thinking about this earlier. I've thought about it just randomly at times. What I could do to make it look more realistic. Because y'all notice in my last two videos, I embedded this effect within the nail. But we had a more flat surface. This was too textured for this look to really come across embedded in the nail. And then I didn't want to layer this even more than it was. There's things I could have done different. Okay. And I think because this is so forward on the surface, it kind of loses its ability to look very realistic. I'm trying, um, one, I didn't want to use a super bright white. That's why I sheared it out with the milky white and a little bit of clear gel polish or top coat. And then you also see I'm using my brush to feather out one edge to kind of make it look like that effect of like a fracture or fissure in it. I think a lot of y'all told me that's what it was called last time when I called them veins, but we all know what we're talking about. I, in retrospect, I could have probably put less layers in the nail of actual, the effect that made it opal. I could have probably used those um, thin flakes, the ones from Daily Charm, the mermaid flakes like those. And, um, just the opal maybe a little mylar flakes encapsulated that and then did these veins within the nail um and then put the white i'd have to that's why i want to do these again um and perfect it a little more and i also feel like i could have used something i could have used a little bit of gray made this a little more gray toned and i think it would have leaned a little more realistic um and then I could have, I mean, could have, would have, should have, right? I'm just trying to tell you guys in case you try it before I'm able to put an updated video. Hopefully y'all guys want to see it. If not, it's really for me to make me feel better. <laughs> um, and I'm adding a little, very, I'm adding very small, like little veining detail. And then I'm adding a little more pronounced detail. And I'm blending it out with that brush because I don't want it to look inauthentic and stand out uh very sharp i guess and that's what's happening so i cured that in the light and i felt like it was too like in 
my face. And this is also where I wish I would have done things differently. Because I got this beautiful effect and I felt like I wanted to kind of tone down the veining I did. So I mixed this sheer little mixture of the milky white, a very sheer pink and some clear. Just to kind of set back those veins I did. And like I said, kind of camouflage them in, in hopes of making them look a little more realistic. I covered up a little more of the opal effect that I wanted to. So I added a little bit of that Oceania or however you say that color. Just to add a little more pop. Not a whole bunch. Just to add a little more of our shift effect back into the nail. And then I top coated because I was going to add the foil and my nails were sticky. I didn't really want to wipe the um, tacky layer. Be just because one of the gels I used, I would wipe some of the pigment off. Whatever. That's the decision I made. So then I'm taking a foil gel. I believe it's the foil gel from um, Daily Charm. You can use called Top of the Tin. And a brush to go to outline the nail. Um, to do this like gold frame and my client requested that some of the gold run through the actual center of some of the nails so you'll see a couple nails on each finger will have a little bit of gold running through it um, that was her request and um, so I'm just going on the edge and I'm not looking for it to be perfect I think it being more you know irregular and haphazard is a kind of better look they kind of make it look like a vintagey type effect and so i'm taking this gold leaf and these tweezers that i hate i can't find my normal tweezers that i usually use for something like this so these kind of gave me the blues and so you see me kind of clean up i didn't want it too much on the actual nail i didn't want to cover up my work i said that in the green fluorite or what was supposed to be jade video um, so only a couple were supposed to have it through the center of the nail. The rest, I made sure it stayed at the very edge of the perimeter of the nail. And these tweezers would just give me the blues. They didn't open up like wide enough the way the tips were shaped. It just, it just wasn't a good thing for me. <laughs> and so I'm just adding it. Like I said, I'm not looking for this perfect straight outline gold rim we want to make it look at we want to make it look a little more distressed um so i'm just making sure i get the majority or you know this is also great camouflage if you file down too much i didn't really have that issue per se um like where you, i could see like the actual natural nail but if you did i told you um in the green nails if you didn't watch the green fluoride video watch that I didn't, I told you guys earlier, I got the shape before I did all of this, before I applied any of the opal effect. I didn't in the green video, the green fluoride video. So in turn, what happened is I filed some of the de design off from the sides of the nail. And so I kind of had to add some of the gold, ef the gold effect in that video. That's really how the gold came to be. We were indecisive. And since I had filed some of the actual design off because I forgot to shape it beforehand it was the, it basically forced my hand to add the gold which turned out beautiful but you know there's it's a, it's a genuinely happy mistake you know there's many ways to troubleshoot an issue and we just try to make sure we pick the option with the best outcome so this is what we have and I went ahead and um, top coated the nails that I wasn't putting crystals on. We decided to do crystals. A little less bling than she did last time. And I'm adding a resin to the nail instead of a crystal gel, which we cure in the light. This is an actual resin glue, like a nail glue. It's not, I mean, like a super glue, but it's made for nails cosmetic use. There's a whole bunch of different types of glues, guys. Um, some of which are not approved to use in cosmetic, um, uses, aka nails. Of course, you would never use it like facial cosmetics, but yeah. So I buffed the surface with my file. I didn't have an actual little buffer, but just to add a little texture so it's not super slick for the glue. 
once it dries i'm going in with a crystal gel now and this is going to make sure i have a chemical and physical adhesion with my um crystals they're actually chemically adhered underneath the crystal with the resin aka the glue and then there the lip is held in the lip around the crystal is physically held with the crystal gel and then at this point we can add beads never ever ever use a nail glue or a resin to glue on beads they're not gonna last unless there's just a brand new it's not there's not enough contact area surface contact area to hold in the, the crystals with a um glue um so we use a crystal gel glue to adhere them because they kind of sink in so after that we cured them we top coated around the crystals over the other nails and this is our final look i personally think i did a lot of what was me but i think they're really beautiful i just want to do it again <laughs> you know i'm a little nail techs my little nail tech friends y'all know what i'm saying sometimes you see it, you look at it for long enough and you're like oh there's so much i could do different but overall oh and the crystals we use we use um Dusty Pink Delight and Chalk White AB. So, shout out to you being here on the end of the video if you're still looking for that. Tell somebody in the comments if you heard me and you hear them ask in the com if you hear them, if you see them ask in the comments. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when I upload. Like I said, I'm trying to upload more often. I took a little vacation, like a, you know, literal one, but I am back i have videos in the works after this if you have any more requests for crystal nails if you for sure want to see this opal video the new and updated one let me know um thank you guys for watching bye